no matter what, continue to do our, what we do every day, actually. It doesn't change. We will be stuck in our apartment with our computer, with our microphone, guitar, whatever what, but we will continue to give this to people because they need it. They need to uh, uh, intensify to music. They need to. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs art, whatever it is. Movies, paintings, scenes, they need it. Everybody needs that. And I will struggle, I will fight until my last breath for this to happen because it, people need art. They need vision of people. They need to recreate with another human. They need to see the mirror of themselves into art. This is my mission here. During this COVID, it's all I can do. This is my mission. That's it. Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope that you all had a glorious weekend. I most certainly did. It is getting so damn beautiful here in Montreal. It is hot. It is fun. It is nice to get out there and enjoy some craft beer in the sun. You forget how much you love that when it's damn cold in the winter. But I'm also super excited because Brutal North America launches next week. That's right. From the 21st of June to the 25th, there are 22 unique band collabs, which are dropping all across the United States and Canada. I am so damn excited about this. Brutal North America is presented by Indie Merch Store, is fueled by Heartbeat Hot Sauce Company, and is is supported by Yakima Chief Hops. I'm so damn excited about this. Just to name off a few of these insane collabs that are coming up. From here in Canada, we got Brewski and Acurian. We got Kanawaki Brewing Company that's doing another brew for my band, Cryptopsy. There's Le Fermentor and The Agonist. There's Overhop Canada and Beyond Creation. From the United States, we got Bone Up Brewing that's been paired with Fuming Mouth. There's Brutal Beer Works, that's got a brew for Abigail Williams, and Speciation Artisan Ale is making a brew for Battlecross. That is just to name a few. There are so many more. If you want to see the full list and would like to find some more info about Brutal North America, head on over to my website, voxandhops.com. That's V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S dot com. And all of the pertinent information is there. This Vox and Hops episode is presented by Heavy Montreal. Heavy Montreal are Montreal's premier metal promoter. They put on a bunch of sick shows throughout the year. But more than that, they also put on one of North America's best metal festivals. And that's the absolute truth. I say this because it is true. I have played festivals all across the globe and Heavy Montreal is up there with the best of them. I am so, so damn stoked that Heavy Montreal has started booking shows again. They have announced that coming up this fall, they got Ginger with Suicide Silence. They've announced All Them Witches. They have announced that Bloodbath will be coming through in 2022 and they have also announced that Ramstein is coming through in August of 2022. I am so, so stoked to have Heavy Montreal all behind the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I would just like to ask you to follow the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast on the podcast platform of your choice. But more than that, I'm asking you to rate it and write a review because when you do that, more metalheads just like yourself will be able to discover the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. Now, why do I say this? It's because when someone's looking for a new podcast to listen to, what do they do? They scroll down. They look at the reviews. If the reviews for that podcast claim that that podcast is awesome, interesting, they will most definitely give that podcast a chance. So if you were to write a review for the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, you could actually be the person that sways someone into becoming a future Vox and Hops head. And that would be something that I would truly, truly appreciate. Now, on today's episode with Lao Le Prinec, the insanely talented vocalist of Igor, as well as Harrison. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops episode number 273. Oh, 
I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Lao Le Prunenek, the vocalist, the phenomenal vocalist of uh, Riesen and Igor in 69. Uh, I've been a fan for many, many years, so uh, I was really, really looking forward to this Thank one. you. Let's Thank start you. with a simple yet complex question. How have Whoa. you been coping with the glorious year, which is now behind us, of 2020? 2020. Uh, uh, can you repeat the question? Yes. How Sorry. Did you, how did you cope with the glorious year that is now behind us of the year of 2020? <laughs> I made a lot of things actually because uh, you know I don't let myself uh, lazy because mm-hmm. uh, uh, for me it was actually uh, I'm very sad for uh, this crisis <laughs> I'm very sad for many 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 people that live the, uh, living a nightmare actually it's a nightmare you can go on stage you can express yourself I'm a musician all the people from the culture are touched and I'm very, very sad for this. Uh, actually, all the people from the music scene are stuck mm-hmm. somehow, you know, we are all stuck. But uh, for me, it was uh, an opportunity to be home. Uh, when I say home, I don't say particularly my home, but I say a place where you can be yourself and you can actually uh, uh, try to put your negativity, <laughs> your frustration into something good. And actually, I had to make this uh, second album of my solo project. So I'm very grateful and glad. Even if it's a very sad moment, I uh, selfishness. <laughs> and uh, with my selfishness, I would say that it was a very, very uh, important moment in my life you know, uh, personally, and I could make this album happening that I could never do it if I was on tour with Igor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, something that's been coming up a lot on the podcast is us as musicians. Sometimes it's hard to stop because it's a band that's moving and there's a whole bunch of moving pieces and we don't want to be the selfish person to say, and I've done it when my kids were born, to say, uh, I need some time off. I I can't go out on tour. So, So to actually be given time from the world from 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 a pandemic to stop is almost sort of a strange strange blessing and and for you to to create the second record was the record something that you had planned already that you wanted to create a second recent record oh yeah but you just didn't have the time Hmm. actually i'm very faithful to the person i work with uh because they gave me a life that i couldn't have Like, I couldn't imagine a life like this. You know, it's not a famous, uh, like, I'm not a celebrity. (laughs) I'm kind of in the underground uh, space, the other side of uh, the music scene. But it's very nice because I, with this uh, person of Gauthier, uh, Laurent, uh, Sylvain, the drummer, uh, now the new guitar player, uh, we met each other not so long ago, and it's it's been such a pleasure to be with uh, creative people like this, crazy people uh, as me um, in music. Like we have the same passion, and this doesn't have boundaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you you just with the right person at the right moment, you do miracles. It's Whatever. magical. It's magical. Yeah. And it just clicks. And it all did definitely just click on spirit, spirituality and distortion. Just such a yeah, and we could Yeah, we continue to have faith uh, because we want to kind of say to people, hey, we're still here. Mm. And we still give you this energy to believe that you can do it yourself. Mm. That's our priority in this moment. Yeah, that is hard for everybody. Everybody's living the same mess, you know? We are the same mess and consider that we are just here to give energy, to to give the faith to people to do it themselves. Whatever they do, 
sculpture, paintings, uh, whatever, mechanic, science, uh, and every kind of, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. We just want to give energy, energy, because people need. We absolutely all do definitely need yeah. energy right now. I get my yeah. energy from something different, though. Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with my metal friends, talking about their life, music, and craft beer. Now, what beer <laughs> are you drinking on your side there? So, so I'm actually in, a, let's say, a break in my life because I, I had to uh, go through a personal, uh, let's say, moment in my life. So now I'm here in Mexico and I'm living in a Puerto Aventuras that is close to Puerto Maya. Mm. And I'm drinking my famous, my favorite beer here, uh, that is uh, uh, Chela Libre. Chela Libre. And for me, it's great because it's actually a very good beer. It's, it's uh, like I IPA mm -hmm. uh, beers. And it's a, a little bit aromatic, but not so much, not too, too much sugar, not too much, you know, it's bitter and sweet at the same time, but not so much. It's the equilibrium that I like. Uh, equilibrium? Equilibrium. Balance, perfectly equilibrium. balanced. Perfectly balanced. I, and so, I yeah. And I love that it's Cella Libre and it, it shows this little chick. Luchador, yeah. And it's a female, uh, yeah, a female it's a female in a fucking ring, and she's proud of herself. And for me, it's a kind of a, let's say a message that I want to uh, let's say deliver tonight with this beer because I don't want to show a message like, oh, I'm drunk, it's cool to drink. Uh, People doesn't need that because they don't need this because it's actual, this actual world always wants you to go to temptations and stuff. And I'm not this kind of person. I just want to show to people this little uh, character that is very funny, but it represents a woman that is proud of herself and just want to be free. That's it. I love that. I love that. And I've heard excellent things about the Mexican craft beer scene just exploding. <laughs> yeah. uh, it makes me very excited to go back on tour and to get back uh, down to Mexico to visit, visit my friend Jerry and me Nayeli, too. who me listen too. to the podcast all the time. This is, I love this is brand new. Uh, just came what? out today so cool. from Les Grabois. <laughs> Les Grabois. And, uh, what, what kind of taste it can be? It it's Grabois. Actually, it's actually, yeah, that's the name of the brewery. Uh, Kutfo, that is the name of the beer. It's a German pilsner. So so the Quebec, well, I'm from Montreal, uh, the Quebec craft beer scene is exploding backwards going <laughs> to the classic styles of brews. And this is one of those, uh, shout out to uh, Dom from uh, Les Grabois, uh, making sure I got this brew. I'm going to pour this out. Yeah. I want to go backwards. I want to hear about your very first beer. Do you remember the first beer that you've drank long? I think it was a very bad one because we didn't have money. I was living in a village kind of in Normandy, in the north of France. Uh, and I was hanging out with my bro. And we were like drinking like very crap, creepy. <laughs> like it was very, very like uh, the taste of shit, actually. <laughs> uh, no, no, a piece, piece. Or uh, better, better, uh, socks juice. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, the vivre. Just, just. Delicious. I think it's the kind of beer that I taste for the first time. But the best alcohol, actually, that I tasted in my life was in my. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Because I went to the church, right? So I'm a. Um, I did my uh, communion in my mm -hmm. confirmation and all that stuff. And for the first time in my twelve years, I had uh, the right to to drink uh, an alcohol of apple from my uh, Normandy. Uh -huh. That was very, very, very good. The first thing I liked because it's when I fell in love with alcohol, I guess. Sounds delicious. This is delicious. It's got a perfect like Cheer. cereal bite. Cheers. Oh yeah, cheers. Cereal you bite. Don't, don't fuck with this. Don't fuck with this man, huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> Please don't. Uh, <laughs> let's go backwards into music now. I would like yeah. to hear about the soundtrack of your youth. When you were growing up in your parents' or guardians' house, what music was playing when you were not in control of the music? What music did your parents or guardians listen to? <laughs> so my mom was... Uh, uh, very, very Catholic uh, person. So every Sunday, she, br she brought me to the church. Oh. And so I was hearing choirs. And, and I think it's the thing that I love the most uh, in my life. When I heard those choirs, I was very shocked to myself. And it had a very, very resonance inside of me. And I couldn't couldn't explain what it was, but I was just, well, this is what I want. Mm. You know, when you understand that it, this is what you need, those choirs. And then, of course, I have a five years uh, brother older than me. And he, he was uh, listening all those uh, 90s bands, metal bands, like uh, Sepultura, uh, Pantera, and when I was 12 years old, I, I was uh, so excited about those bands. I was jumping all around the house like, ah! And, and I think it was my first uh, crush in music, mm. this energy that I found also in Mozart and in Bach and in uh, uh, Chopin. Uh, you know, I think music is a very beautiful language and that in my childhood, I was very, really lonely, mm -hmm. little, little girl. And I was spending most of time hearing music or uh, doing my stuff in my brain. You know, I was imagining a world in my mind and it was a kind of, a, I was not incarnated really. I was not really on earth at this time. I was just kind of, you know, <laughs> waiting for something, but I was a sponge. So I took a lot from, uh, like my brother loved also, you know, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And he was like repeating the gestures front of the TV. And I was like a little girl looking at him like, oh, wow, it's good. I like it. And you know, and he was also listening to Sepultura and I was like jumping with him like in the fucking couch. And also when my mom went back to, to, to her work, she was listening to Diana Ross and stuff like that. And my father that he left when I was three years old. So I don't have a good connection with my father but I know that he was on uh, soul music like uh, uh, more the uh, uh, jazz or soul music, like Aretha Franklin or this kind of, or even, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's very, very scattered. I don't really know where it comes from. Which explains a lot because you are all over the place and I love that about you. You have no <laughs> boundaries. Your voice has no boundaries. You can do anything with it. It's it's very admirable. Oh, thank you. And you seem but, to ha you have complete artistic freedom in in whatever project you seem to be a part of. Yeah, because it's uh, what I understood very very early in my in my life. In my I have a little life. Or I'm thirty six years old right now. But what I understood about its life is that it's never done. You always have to learn. You always have to pick up ideas from nature, from movies, from, you know, I pick up my ideas not from music, actually, because I don't listen so much music in my life. What inspires me a lot, it's nature, it's people, look at people, how they react, how they, you know, I found my inspirations with a lot of things that are not music, actually. That's why I, I love uh, cinema, I, I, I would be a director if I couldn't do music. If I couldn't sing, I would be a director because I love to put in scene something uh, to show a story, even if it's not in the same language as anybody knows, but it would be a message because people 
are reacting with music, are reacting with, because it talks to their soul directly. There's no filters. That's what I like about music and cinema. It's because it talks to the heart of people immediately. There's no filters. You can't lie in this. All people will say, oh, I like it, or I don't like it. There will be, uh, there will be no pity here. That's what I love about music. There's when, no when, lies. When you are composing and you hear something and you, you visualize a scene as if you're directing, basically, and then when you add an extra layer, it's as if you're, you're painting an extra layer on a painting almost. Yeah, it's a painting. For me, it's, uh, I'm dancing, I'm painting, I'm, I'm doing everything. You know, I'm in a state really, really, really strange actually, because I don't even know. It's kind of a, a trance. Mm -hmm. I'm a vector, I'm a vector. I'm a kind of vector, I'm a tube. I'm kind of a tube and I let myself cross by. That's it. I just let myself cross by. I don't control anything here. I just know how to do it. That's, <laughs> that's my only, actually, that's my only power is that I can direct it. But uh -huh. I'm just a vector to those emotion, to those uh, thing that comes to me that I can go that I can let go for people. And it's kind of, you know, I put it in my mouth to, to, put, to put it and I serve it to people. That's my, that's my mission here. Are, are there moments that, that you have something in you and it has to get out of you? And until it's out of you, it, it gnaws at you? Like an idea, a, a song? Sorry, we have, a, we have to... Don't worry, I'll ask questions. Oh, sorry. Perfect. I was just breaking up okay. the audio. I was just breaking up the audio into two parts, so it's not a big file. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, you think about you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, are there moments that you have something in you, a creative idea that you need to get out of you, and is that something that gnaws at you and you you feel trapped until it is out of you? Uh, it's a you know, it's not simple question. No. Because uh, life, you know what is life? It's something that you cannot control. The only thing you can control is what you do with yourself, okay? You have no control about what is happening outside. Tomorrow I can die with a car. I can, I can lose my passport. I can, you know, everything can happen. But what is sure about this state of what music is, is living inside of me. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a life. And I don't know why, it's kind of something that is maybe a surviving state. Because wherever I am, I will be in the state of mine that I need to create now, now. I need to, I need to give what I had because this, this kid smiled at me because the sun is still here, you know, shiny and all that stuff that I need to give to people. I don't know why. It's, a, it's not easy to, to answer this question. It's tough. And do, you have, do you have like a recording device that you can just record yourself or is it? Yeah. All the time. I need, are you, are you I need to, to record. Are you afraid to lose it sometimes too? Yeah. I take it easy. <laughs> you know what? I'm very, very, very protective with my own. Uh, it's very crazy, actually, because it's uh, something so precious for me that I don't want to put dust on it mm -hmm. in any case. So what I do is that I keep it fresh all the time. I need to keep it fresh. So I very face like very 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 careful when i have an idea i let it go the most i can like i don't want to touch it i just want it to express it it's in itself hmm. and one day it's ready and i don't know how it it's it just come into my my mouth and i can record it it's time to 
interesting. How do you deal with deadlines? Because a lot of artists have deadlines and you're, you're put to, to a time frame. It's always in the background of my head. When I have to, let's say, when I have to, for example, work for Igor album. Mm -hmm. Let's say mm -hmm. the last album, Spirituality and Distortion. I always had the song in my head, like in loop. And I work all day long, even if I'm doing other things. I would be with you talking, but at the and same time, I have in the, it's going on. <laughs> it's going on. And you know, it's very complicated because people doesn't understand that sometimes. But you are like with a person, and <laughs> she's talking to you and you're like, Da, 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 da. and you're like putting your inspiration and oh yeah listen to you yeah, yeah yeah i'm here i'm here but the person of course is not an idiot at the, at the end of the day hey come on you are not listening to me <laughs> i'm i you know me <laughs> you know me too much you, you need a very, a very understanding partner in situations like that uh, to to keep you in check and then to 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 respect your creative process. It's very hard to have friends, actually. <laughs> you need artist friends. That's that's what we need to because we all suffer together. All my friends are creative people, of course, and but we don't see each other so much because we know <laughs> we know so much how it is impossible to live with each other because we are impossible people. <laughs> it's true. We, a lot of creative we people stay apart. We stay yeah. apart and we love each other so much, <laughs> but we stay apart because we know that one day we will be together on tour or whatever. So yeah, blah, 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 I don't yes. want to see you now. <laughs> because I know when we will see each other, it will go like, <laughs> and so let's be calm. <laughs> You do have the part of the spirituality and distortion, my favorite moment of the record. And I was obsessed with it when it came out. Uh, polyphonic rust Thank near you. the end of the track when everything breaks down and it's just you and a bunch of harmonies. Oh, just, just so good. And you know, it was a crazy time in my life. I was uh, kind of divorcing. <laughs> wow. uh, it was a crazy time and I was like, recording when I can, mm -hmm. five minutes, 10 minutes in the studio in Paris in uh, the 11th quarter in Genesee where I went to do my master classes and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I have like, okay. So I needed to go 30 minutes Metro and I had to go to this uh, studio session. And this time I said to Gautier, listen, today is the day. I'm gonna record the last song. And it will be all right. It will be all right. Don't worry. Because he was kind of hurry, like, hey Lord, what are you doing? We have deadline. And I was kind of late. And I'm professional. But when you professional, uh, sorry, you and uh, it's the beer actually. I've started to be drunk. This is, this is, this it's is, the, this is how I get uh, to people. There's the professional life and there's the intimate life. And sometimes things are going crazy in your intimacy. And you're like, fuck, I have to do this album tomorrow. But I fight all day long. What can I do? And you're lost. And you, you have to, because I'm so faithful to my projects that I cannot abandon my friends. Mm -hmm. So I always choose to go right in the right way where I can go to the studio and just do it. So it's the story of uh, poly, what's, what's the title of this song? Polyphonic Rust. Polyphonic Rust. Um, because with Gautier, when we work, we have crazy titles. <laughs> we don't yeah, even, yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, use, yeah. So, yeah, I did that in one day, actually. Mm. And he was crazy about it, so he kept it. Yeah. I did, I did like a choir of many voices and he said wow it's wonderful and we were about to do another song actually that i did before and he said mm, i would i would like to have the samples into my song what do you think 
I said, mm, it would be nice to do another thing. And I tried something else and then this song appeared. Magic. It was like... One of those moments. Mm. Just pure magic. With uh, Gautier, there's always magic happening with this man. So oh, yeah. Yeah. So exciting to be around people like that. Uh, for for Rissa, I, I really discovered it by accident. I was super tired after work. My kids were playing. I had put on like a, a playlist on my phone and a track played. It was the first single. And I was like, what is this? This It made me think of, there's a Quebec artist named Jaren, who uh, when she started out, she just plays cello and she makes sounds with her voice. <laughs> and it, she used to be slightly heavier. Now she's sort of gotten a bit more mainstream over the years, which is cool. I still appreciate her. But that first album was I was obsessed with it. So so I was like, what is this? And it made I was too tired, but I got up off the couch and I checked it and I was like, what is this? And the I first album it. is hard actually. I know that it's hard to listen until the end. But the uh, first album is so shy. Mm. There's a lot of things that are not assumed. And uh, it's kind of a debut album. Mm -hmm that I assumed because I didn't want to do an album actually, uh. you know? I did that by uh, accident. <laughs> Just an uh, accumulation of tracks, is that it? I did a lot of songs hmm. and from uh, my 18s, you know? It was stuck in my head, but I really realized that I should do it because a friend of mine that I loved a lot died. And always, 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 he was painting on my songs. And he would say to me, help, help me. Your songs, you have to do it. Please, Lord, do your album. And he died. And not even, yeah, maybe two weeks after that, Blood Music contacted me because they saw a track on Laurence Lunoir, the singer of Igor. Mm -hmm. And they said, wow, it's so beautiful. It was a cover, actually. It was Lady Nerds mm -hmm. by uh, Henri Purcell, this composer that I love so much. And they were in love with this. And so they proposed me to do an album. And so I said, uh, yes, but I'm not ready. And so in, in two months, I collected all my songs on my tracks and I did an album with this and I gave them and they said, okay, we produce it. Wow. That was my first album. Because I wanted, to be, I wanted to be faithful to my friends. Mm. I promised him. It's beautiful. Beautiful. No, it is love. What, what, what was different this time around? What was different? What is the question? What was different Sorry. this time around with, this, with the, the, the second album? The second album is a, an album of maturity hmm. because I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a child still, but I think I really learned a lot of things. You know, uh, but this is an album, of course, of a deception love. Again, all I, uh, I think all my albums are about uh, what is to be love, what is the, what it is to be a human in this purse, what it is to, uh, because I want to, to talk to humans in the most simply way, because I am human. So I don't want to, uh, to make a fake uh, identity to prove to people that I'm better. Mm. In my music, I want to show to people that I'm a human and that I just want people to understand what is it good. What is good here, over here? What is good to take and what is bad to take? And what is good to just let it go? And what is good, to, what is toxic, what is not? To try to, I just want to help them by my 
because I know that music talks to the heart directly. Mm -hmm. So I want just to uh, help people with my own life because I'm going through the same mess. So why not helping when you are able to? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't be a nun. I can be a, a nurse. I can't be a... So I'm good at it. Let's do it. Let's, let's help people because it helps them. I received so many messages of people that are helped, actually. I don't want to go through the... Oh, like heal the world. You know, I'm not this kind. I don't want to do like... A, like noise around it i just want people to wake up because it's time to wake up you have to do your life mm. that's it that's it this is a heavy montreal presents vox and hops episode now i know that igor has only come through montreal one time uh, do you have any memories of that and uh, what can you tell me about stephen henry who drove you on that tour do you remember stephen henry what 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 tour? <laughs> we did so much. <laughs> when you came through Montreal that one time, do you have any memories? Ah, Montreal. Montreal. Yes. Uh, I don't remember so much. I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I remember a man that talked to me after the show and told me that, uh, oh, we want you here more often. And they were uh, like opening their uh, music. Uh, in this venue mm -hmm. to other people more in the underground music. So I like this idea that they were open to more, even more uh, underground music, music that you don't hear on the radio, that you mm -hmm. don't used to it. And I love this about this man, that he was open to it. Yeah, I remember that. I love that too. Um, let's talk about energy. Uh, you're talking about energy a lot. Music is energy. Life is energy. Uh, right now, you cannot get that reciprocal energy of performing. So, so how have you been filling that void? Oh, shit. It's uh, cutting. Don't worry. I'll say it again. Bad, bad what? Sorry. Don't worry. I'll say it again. Uh, how have you been filling the void of not performing live? You're talking about this time of COVID. Yeah, I was not avoid. Um, but you can't get you can't get on stage, so you're not getting that reciprocal energy of performing. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, again, uh, as a human, I understand totally. There's like when the news happened, I didn't even knew about the COVID. Like mm. I learned one day before I was touring with Igor because mm -hmm. we just had this uh, album. We, we were done with this album and we were going on tour. It's all, mm -hmm. everything was settled. So when I had this phone call about my booking manager, hey, it's not happening. Tomorrow you don't go to Real Souls. Tomorrow you, don't, you won't go to this tour. Everything is canceled. There's the COVID epidemic that is ruining the world right now. Like everybody's dying from this. Did you hear about it? Uh -huh. I was shocked for two days, three days. I couldn't even, like I was drinking. I was depressed. Uh -huh. And then I said to myself, okay, so people need even more. People need even more music. So we continue. And it's what we said with uh, everybody. We continue. No matter what, continue to do our, what we do every day, actually. It doesn't change. We will be stuck in our apartment with our computer, with our microphone, guitar, whatever what, but we will continue to give this to people because they need it. They need to... Uh, uh, identify to music they need to everybody needs it everybody needs art whatever it is movies 
paintings, scenes. They need it. Everybody needs that. And I will struggle. I will fight until my last breath for this to happen because it, people need art. They need vision of people. They need to recreate with another human. They need to see the mirror of themselves into art. This is my mission here. During this COVID, it's all I can do. This is my mission. That's it. I love it. I, I absolutely love that. Uh, I'm in a band with Ali Pinard, who plays mm -hmm. for Cattle Decapitation. Mm. You were on Death Atlas. My dear Travis. I was going to say, I, I was going to say, obviously, Travis hooked that up. So, so talk to me about that experience. We never met, actually. It's really? very weird. Yeah, I wish. I wish, but we never met because he was always on tour. I was always on tour. And we were about to meet in a show with Igor, but it was not happening with the COVID. So now things are like, I heard like uh, two years ago that this man was listening to my first album, A Loop in His Car. And I heard from a, a friend of him. And I was like, okay, good. Let's <laughs> listen to, to this song of him. And I discovered uh, a very good singer. Oh, yeah. And I felt that this man had somebody new, had something new, sorry, in his voice to uh, create the thing that I... Like when I was thinking of my song, Doris, that actually there's uh, animations happening for oh, this very song. Very exciting. Uh, it will be ready soon. So I was so excited about this song because I wanted to scream from the earth, from the, how do you call it in English? The hole that is in the belly. Mm -hmm. The your diaphragm, your gut. The organs. Like, your guts, uh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted it to, 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 to explode from the earth. Like the, the deep coming from the earth and explode. And I wanted to scream that represent this at the end of the song. So in my head, I said, okay, you like my first album? This man told me, hey, I listened to your album six months in a row in my car <laughs> because it was stuck in my fucking car, but it was so beautiful. And he, he, it's Travis Ryan, you know, it's not, you know, and I said to myself, OK, so this is the man for this cream. I want this uh, animals screaming from the the Outre tombe, we will say in yes. French. Outre tombe, the Chateaubriand, from the Outre tombe, from uh, the uh, deep hearts. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. It's yeah. funny how life works and you, we get connected with people and they end up filling these holes that we had. It's just amazing. And I, the more that I talk to people, the more that I see that happening. And I love that. And Travis is amazing. Um, he is amazing. Let's talk about craft beer once more. Uh, if you could make a beer for yourself, something that you would drink that, that represents you, what beer would that be? What style of beer? Now, what would you call it? Spicy, crazy, uh, smart. Spicy, crazy, smart beer. I love it. <laughs> what percentage would that be? The most you can do. <laughs> In Quebec, that, that I want swell. sensations. I need sensations, you know. <laughs> ten, ten degrees. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's wrap this up with one last question. Yeah, A sure. classic wrap-up question at this point. Uh, it probably never happens to you. But every once in a while, it happens to everyone. What is your hangover cure? <laughs> T 
to make love. Mm. So that's the first time anyone's ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> it does help a bit, though. It's true. <laughs> this is my cure for everything. <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much for taking the time. Talking thank to me you. About your life, music, and craft beer. Thank I am you. It was truly awesome. honored. Big, big fan. And I can't wait to hang out in person and to hear more about me your, too. your artistic endeavors. I think it's very, very, very inspiring and creative. And uh, just keep spreading that energy because the world needs it. Oh, thank you so much. And I, I'm already in my third album, actually. Yes. Uh, yeah. Con we continue anyway. Yes. Good. Thank you so much. That's exciting. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Now, I cannot tell you how excited I was for this conversation. Um, I am a huge fan of Lal's work. I have been since the very first time I heard her sing on anything what a beautiful voice yet also she can just do anything she wants with her voice she can be aggressive it's just insane i had such a blast connecting with her and listening to her speak about her creative approach her artistic integrity and her mission to create art for the world i absolutely absolutely love that massive thanks to lal for giving me the chance to have this conversation i cannot wait to listen to the future things you create for the world if you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast's mailing list. You can do that on my website, voxandhops.com. That's V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S.com. And when you do that, you shall receive one email a week containing all of the details of everything that has happened throughout the past week in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, including all the details for any episodes which I have dropped throughout that past week. If I have been a guest on someone else's podcast, any pertinent information for any cool projects that that I have in the works, such as Brutal North America, as well as the updated links to the Thirsty Thursday Virtual Hangs and the links to the Brutal Awakenings playlist, which is available on both Apple Music and Spotify and is curated by my man, Jerry Monk, the metal architect himself. So please do me a favor and sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast mailing list because there is just so much going on in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. I would hate for you to miss a single thing. The Vox and Hops Metal Podcast is brought to you by Sound Talent Media. I have one more episode coming up this Friday, but until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. Oh,